Last year, We Are Memories delighted card makers across the planet with their envelope punch board so that you could make an envelope to match any size of card. This year, they've expanded to include box and bag punch boards. Right, and we are here to show you all about these four new boards and the wonderful things you can do. Come, Come play, play with, with us. us. Well, here are the four of them. There is the uh, pillow box, good. the gift box, the candy, and the uh, well, gift bag and gift, gift box bag. over I here. Said gift box. You That's did. A gift bag. <laughs> <laughs> so there are four, and we're going to take them one by one. So we're going to start, start with the pillow box. Scoot these away, and this is what it looks like now. All of these come with excellent instructions. Right. We're giving them an A, are we, on an instructions? An A on instructions. So here is the instruction sheet that is provided. There are photos with each instruction. Excellent. Follow these to the letter, and you will get just exactly what you're looking for. <laughs> okay. Front and back. <laughs> I wish we could say that about everything right. on the market. <laughs> Here's the actual punch board. Now, it's plastic. It has a punch on it at the top, and it also has a... Um, a bone folder scoring tool that just gets housed right in here and when you push it in it's it's not stays in there yeah. so you're not going to lose it you're going to have it every time you go right. to use it now if you want to see what this is going to create here is the pillow box it looks like this well at least one type and this was done out of paper and of course embellished as you can see and a pillow box that means that these ends are going to open one of them has a thumb uh, tab. Right, and, which is part of the punch system. Right. right, and so you can embellish and decorate however you want. So why don't you walk us through the steps? All right. Okay. So here's our punch board, and while we do have this fantastic sheet that tells us everything about what we're going to do, there is also a little cheat diagram right here, so that if you've gone through this and you kind of remember, oh yeah, I remember what to do, you can just follow this in these directions as well. Good idea. And what it says <laughs> is you're going to start with a piece of paper that is six inches wide. Now that's for the pillow box. Everything you do is going to be six inches wide and then the length you can go from four inches, which is what this piece is, all the way up to 12 inches. Okay. So you can use a 12 by 12 piece of paper, cut it down to six inches and you're ready to go. You start by putting this with the six inch line on the line of the punch line, which is up here, right up into, oh, there's a line right there, you're going to fill it click sort of uh, set rest against that edge. So it's stopping you so a little bit? So it's stopping, okay. and you're going to go right over to this line, which is the start line. And it's marked down at the bottom, it says start line. So you'll know right where you're going to go. You put your edge of the paper right there. You start by punching. Oh. Make sure it's going all the way through. And I should have grabbed that bone folder before I started, because <laughs> I don't want to hold it in place. And then I'm going to score a line. And down at the bottom of this, uh, it says vertical line, it says vertical. And that's the first score line. There's a spot there, and if you start up at the top. Now, if you're going to use paper, which you can, I'm using a double-sided paper, or you can use cardstock, that works well too, then you don't wanna push, if it's paper, too hard into that score line because it can go right through the paper. You don't want to rip the paper. So just a light score line. And there it is. There's a score line. Now you're going to move that line over to that start line, which you can see it down here, but you can also see it right up at the top, which is that little edge. Align that there, and you're also at the same time aligning it with this little edge over here. The line, what was just punched was this piece, and that's going to sit right in that little depression, and you're going to align this here. Now I'm going to punch it again. And I'm going to score it along that line again over on the right. So it could be called punch and score, couldn't punch it? Punch and score. <laughs> so I'm not done yet. I'm going to move that score line. And again, this is going to rest right there in the depression. That score line is aligned with the start line. I'm going to punch again. But I don't have to score it again. What you do at this point is you have this end of your box. Now you're going to flip it over and do the other side. I'm going to start just the way I did before. I'm going to start on the start line, 
I'm going to punch. And you've already scored it. I've so already you scored it. Don't need it. to do that again. If this piece of paper was longer than the platform, then uh, longer than the it's about six inches, mm -hmm. then I would have to also score the top part. Gotcha. But at this point, all I have to do is move it over, punch it, move it over, punch it again, lining it up. And that, that part pretty simple. is done. <laughs> I don't, well, I'm going to need this in a minute, so I'm going to set it down. The next thing that you're going to do is you're going to turn it over. Turn it around. Okay. Turn it around. So this is another, this is how you get the little punch, the little finger, finger hole at mm -hmm. the end. So choose which one. It kind of doesn't matter, just one or the other. You set that in there, and it sits right in. And if there's guides here that just set it right in there. Punch one end. And, whoops, had it there. <laughs> it sits on this side too. It keeps. Right. And punch the other end. So now I've got punches at both ends. Okay, let me remove this for you. <laughs> oh, wait a minute, I forgot something. Did you forget something? I did. Okay, oh. then I won't remove it. <laughs> when, when you're going along, see, I knew I'd, ah. Okay, <laughs> when I started. Let's scoot this up a little bit. I started right here. You right. remember that I started right on the score line. Mm -hmm. I knew there was more than one score, and then I forgot about it. <laughs> There's a score right here where it oh. says curve. The photos tell you to do that, and then I didn't look at the photo. You, there's a score line right there, too. And there's a little oh. depression there, right there, that where it fits right in there. You can sort of hear it clicking yeah. in there, so it follows along easily. So when you move them over, you're going to score along there as well, because that's going to make your little... Um, your little flap right. come over just the way you want it to. But it seems like they've really thoroughly thought of everything right. here. Right, so they I've got one that I already did, okay. so I'm going to move on to that. They have it, so everything is ready for you to go. You can see the little score lines that were made all over. Now, on this last flap, I did score so that there's a, a curved line here and here, and they say to cut that part off so that it won't interfere when you um, when you put it together. Okay. So right along those score lines, I'm going to cut that out. And if you forget that, you'll become aware of it when you go to fold it because right. it will just kind of be in your way. A little bit. I, I think I did one and I left it on there and it didn't make a lot of difference, okay. but it does, it does make it easier to fold, e easier to close. So once you've done that, now you're going to fold on your lines here and Fold right on there, and you want to score it. I'm going to line those up. Make sure that those are scored. You can use the bone folder for that and for that one as well. When you get to this point, then you're going to use something like a double-sided adhesive, an ultra tape. I would use ultra tape if this was cardstock. For this, it's it's all right. I'm going to go ahead and use the my stick um, double-sided double adhesive. Put that right along there. It's a good idea to do it. On both sides. And the easy way to close this is to just fold it down on top of itself. It lines up automatically. And now you have that. And the other one, I went ahead and put those nice little punch holes in <laughs> so that once I closed it up, <laughs> those punch holes, you can see that one of them would be punched like this. So well, let me I didn't do it on this one, but then they just close up right. like that. And let me bring this back in, and so you can see that those ends just uh, create that pillow, hence the right. name of the product. Now, on this one, um, you can see that these rhinestones are a gold color. Now, gold they're, they're, rhinestones they're green. are green, green yeah. are they? Mm -hmm. Okay, well, greeny gold. Yeah. Okay. Um, <laughs> but what was done is that Amy used the want to scrap. Uh, rhinestones, and you can see they're really long, uh, but that did not stop her. She <laughs> simply cut them and just placed them down, but before she placed them, she colored them with the Spectrum Nor pen. Right, so which I've I got think one is of the, brilliant. Right here, and here's oh, okay. the, it's the CG2, it's from the green set. Hence, it's not gold, it's green. <laughs> it is green, <laughs> but, it, but it's, a, it's a light green, it's a yellow green, so there you go. It's oh. there, you just run over them Gosh, like that. Gosh, that's tough, isn't really it? Really easy. <laughs> just give it you know, a, a few seconds to um, 
to dry and there you go you've got green rhinestones or whatever color you like right now just in case you're not familiar with these they are on a strip of adhesive so I can lift up this whole piece just this easily right and, and it's all together right it all stays together you can clip it just with scissors and place it wherever you want and so you can use little bits of it right. just one little swirl or the entire swirl well and as a matter of fact that's exactly what she did so you can see that she's got a swirl there but little bits here and here right and more over on the side right. so and the nice thing is because they're from want to scrap they're really inexpensive so okay. you can afford to have them one thing i wanted to point uh -huh. out about that pillow box we showed you that little short one right well this one is 12 inches long so you can use a 12 inch long paper and i created one of these pillow blocks it, what you do is you lose about an inch when, when you have to put the ends in like this. So right. it'll go from a four inch pillow box all the way to a 12 inch. And typically you put that finger hold right in first. Right. That way you can pull it out. Now here's another example, one kind of in the middle. And Gail talked about you can use paper, you can use cardstock. Well, you can also use the holographic papers. And this is the uh, Blues uh, Fireworks, right. as you can can see but how wonderful that looks on your pillow box it is beautiful and when you when you do these longer papers if they're longer than the actual punch board if they're going to be longer than the point punch board then you're going to do one end and when you flip it over to do the other end as we say you're going to have to rescore right. those ends so that they match up one other thing I wanted to point out is on the first box, we used this uh, rhinestone. On this is the Allure. Right. The rhinestone Allure. And this one is? The Rhinestone Eternal. Oh, thank you. <laughs> thank you for remembering that. So this has been used. And again, you're just using pieces of it. So just want to point that out. That Wish is the new Dazzle Charms. And this is the Silver Pearl, and they're very easy to do. I backed that one with just a little bit of the holographic paper, and then on the back of it, there is an actual, the other side of that Dazzle Charm. They're matching charms, and each of these are like that, so that they aren't sticky because they are backed with the identical charm. And this dot is not a ribbon. Well, I guess it sort of is a ribbon. <laughs> it's a fabric tape, and it comes from Maya Road, and there are lots of different Different colors but I love just the contrast right. how what that provides for you well and before I closed the ends of this box that's when I put the fabric tape on while it's still on a flat pattern mm -hmm. before you pop it up sure. and, and it just sticks right on it's it's double-sided adhesive I wrapped it around the center but I did sort of something different in the center and I don't know if you noticed but I actually created a bow with it and the way I did hey. that was I took some crepe ribbon from the set that I used for that I think it's the white truffle uh, ribbon set and I took some of the fabric tape and this is the way you take the adhesive off the back of it. it it's actually just like this. You spend a time trying to find the little corner. There we go. <laughs> and you pull that off. Now you've got that adhesive back and then I just placed it right on top of the ribbon. Oh, on top of another piece of ribbon. Right. So I placed it right oh, on top of the ribbon so that... Almost like you're matting it. <laughs> right, right. So I am, it is, I found that I, I taped, I remember I taped down the other end of the ribbon onto the table so that it would lay flat while That's I did this. because I wasn't there to hold right. it for right. you. Right, now Shame I have my, my helper. <laughs> that way you have a ribbon that you can actually oh. turn into a bow. So you can make it double purpose. Right. Okay. So. Now we've done that, um, pillow box. Now we're going to go into the gift bag and the gift bag is similarly done. It comes with instructions and um, you're going to, you're getting all your pieces ready. Well, let me show you uh, what mm -hmm. one of the boxes looks like. So here is a taller one and you can see that this is just a really nice size and then you can do, of course, different sizes. And I guess that's right. true of all of these punch boards. Right, all of them are, um, usually the height or the length is what's going to vary. You're gonna have the same width for whatever okay. you're making. 
but then you can, these go from 4 to 12 inch lengths of paper, so you're going to get a okay. varying height in the size of your gift bag. Okay, show us the magic of this punch okay, board. Okay, so here is the punch board, and it does come with very good instructions. I found that this one is probably the more detailed of the set. It is very easy to do as long as you are following the instructions <laughs> the way they tell you. As so much in life is right. easier if you follow the instructions. And you're going to, the bag width can vary as well on this one. So you can get a small, medium, or large bag, and that tells you how wide you're going to use a piece of paper. It's gonna be a 10, 11, or 12 inch piece of paper. And it's going to start by running along here. I'm gonna start by taking out our handy little bone <laughs> folder, so that's ready to go. Now again, the instructions are duplicated right here, right. aren't they? Right, so this, okay. is, this is the brief form of the instructions. So once you've done Great. it a couple of times, that's probably all you're gonna need. And I've got a piece of cardstock here, and I'm gonna show you something interesting. I have it cut from 11 inches, so this is the width that I'm going to use, and this happens to be a 12 inch long uh, piece of paper. Now, I know, I, I went ahead and decorated the top. Yes, you did. <laughs> to show that this is going to be the top of my bag. I want that pretty decoration on the top. And sometimes you might have a paper like, like so, I'm bringing it in, a paper that has a decoration. Mm. I want that up on the top. I don't want it to be hidden on the bottom where it's going to be folded under. Right. So I'm paying attention to where the top is, and then I make sure that I do my punching at the opposite end. Ah, okay. So that's really important. Now, when you start, I've written that this is my start line on the left side, and here is the start line on the punch board. So I'm gonna push this in. This goes all the way up to there, and you can feel it stop right over to that line, and you start by punching. And they recommend that on this one, they even put a little pad up here to show you. On this one, it's best to punch up at this end of the punch. Hmm. So once you've done that, the first thing you're going to score is whatever you've chosen, small, medium, or large. Since I'm using an 11 inch piece, that happens to be a medium. So I'm gonna do a score line on medium all the way down. And again, if you're using paper, don't push too hard or you'll push right through the paper. And then there's a horizontal line. It says it right there. And that's where you're gonna do the horizontal line all the way across. And oh, actually, I think you stop right at the, you stop right at the score line okay. right there. So, then, no, you go all the way across. Never mind what I just said. Horizontal all the way across. <laughs> then you move it over. Now, now you didn't have anything that you needed nothing to. Nothing else. Okay. The first one, and that's what the instructions tell you. The first thing you do is punch and then score across um, horizontally and vertically. Then you move that first score line over to the start line, which is that line there that you're going to see on your punch. Move it over to there. You punch. Now you're going to do your horizontal, and you're not going to do the medium that you just did. Now you move over to this. You do two sides. It says side here, it says side here. You do those two lines. And I imagine that's to do the gusset so that it becomes... This is the side right. of the bag, mm -hmm. right. So there's the side, but you also need this triangle shape, so you're going to score that. Uh -huh. And that's going to help fold the bottom of the bag. Then you move over. The last scored line that you just made goes over to that start point again. You punch. Then you're going to do your horizontal and your medium, which is the bag that I chose as a medium. So you score there and there. You move it over one more time, over to that start position, punch. Now you're going to do your horizontal, which you'll do in all cases, and then side, side, which is right there, and triangle. The other punch boxes and boards, you're gonna flip the, this over at this point and do the other end. Because this is a bag, you're not gonna do this at the other end. So you go ahead and, oh wait, I've got one more line. When you see another line, that means you have to bring it over and punch it again. <laughs> so just a punch on that one. Then we open, there we go. So now here's the bottom of our bag and it's all scored and ready to go. We're not gonna flip it over and do the end. What we're going to do is score all of those long lines that we did, and we're going to do it just by, we're gonna score it all the way up, but we already have our guideline here, so we just sort of continue it up like that okay. to score the top of it. 
So you just do that to complete You'll do that to complete it on each on each of the long scores that you see. Okay. It goes all the way up. So we do that on each of them. And then we're going to glue the ends together. Okay, so I've got one that I've done. But the other thing that you're going to do is you're going to, if you want, punch holes at the top for strings. And I'll show you this on the other one. So here's one that I did where I left this at the top and I punched the bottom. I scored all of the lines so they're ready to fold. But before I do that, I wanted to punch the holes at the top. And the way I did it was I turned the punch around which in each case you do this. And for right here is where you're going to center one of the score lines. For this, you definitely have to follow the directions on which ones to, to punch. It shows you which score line to punch, and you get this double punch. Okay. So I did that. I did it here. So it's a double circle? It's a double punch, and oh, it okay. punched twice, and I did it right over here, Good. wherever it told me to do it, so I get a double punch. That's if you want a lace ribbon or a, um, a handle through the top of the bag. So I did that along the top. Then I was ready to turn it over, fold it right back on top of itself. You've got that, that tab there, and you just glue it on top of there. So when you fold it flat, you're going to glue that on top of there. Here, I'll run my, that's why I brought this. I'm going to run this along the edge there, and I'm going to try to keep it close to the fold edge. I'm just going to try to. Now again, if you're doing paper, you find that um, this works well. If you've got cardstock or holographic or a more substantial paper, you'll probably want to use the ultra tape. Right. Okay. Because it needs to be a stronger, right. a stronger bond. Okay, there it's flattened, it's on there, and then I can pop it up like this. And I've I've uh, scored those lines pretty well. That all I have to do is fold these over. Oh, I'm gonna I'm gonna put let's see I'm gonna put adhesive on the flaps too. Here, just a couple of them. You don't have to do it on all four, just on two of them. Then when you fold them over, you've got these two and these two, and it'll stick just like so. There you go. Okay. So now you've got this gift bag that stands up, and the sides will collapse in with those little triangles. You can close it up at the top, and if you want to, because we've got these punched holes at the top, you can put ribbon through those holes to make a nice handle. Right. So I'm going to pull that through. I'm going to pull that through. And I can tie it together. And then after I do, I can shorten that to however I want need. And then I have um, the gift bag handle up at right. the top. This Excellent. is a really tall, thin bag. Mm -hmm. But you can make any size height. But I like that the design is up at the top. I do, too. I think that's really striking. Yeah. Now, on this shorter one, um, what was used are some of the pearls. And I just want to bring this in. So I showed you the rhinestones. So here are pearls exactly the same way. Self-adhesive, so you can just swirl on them. This is using the new chalkboard paper. And the smaller version also has the pearls. I'm not sure if you can see them. I see them perfectly in right. person. Those are the allure pearls. Okay. And they're kind of doubled up a little bit so you can get more of an effect. And using some of the chalkboard uh, sayings, scrapbooking dazzles oh, it's so there. so striking. I like that. It is, isn't it? And this is another example of what you can do with your holes is turn them over right. and punch and slip a ribbon this way so it seals that mm -hmm. little little bag. So that works nicely. So cute little gift bags. Pretty simple to make. Now we're going to do a candy box. And this is the purple one. I love how they color coordinate their, their <laughs> items. And uh, you have that one. So you're going to show do. us? Okay. Well, maybe we should look at what it looks like first. Okay. <laughs> Let me bring this in quickly. So this is the candy box. Right. So it is a, a box type. Again, the length can vary. Mm -hmm. And you have 
the board now. I do. So <laughs> okay. here's the board, and here's the, we're going to pull out the scoring tool. And again, the punching will be done at the top. At the end, we're going to add little embellishments with the reverse punch. And then you've got the shortened directions here, and you've got a full range of directions inside to look at. What I have here is a seven by six inch piece of paper, and I'm going to remember trim paper width to seven inches. So that seven inches is where we do our punching. We're going to do it on this end and the opposite end. You start right here on this line. There's a diamond there, and I'll show you how that's useful in a minute. So start, oh, the start point is here. This is the start point. That's a scoring line. So you start here with your seven inch width on top, punch, and so I don't think I have a reason to score yet. So <laughs> then we move over. But you were programmed to get right. ready to score, weren't you? See you see the punch? It's half oh, of a diamond. Okay. So it fits right around. This is a raised bit that it just fits right on there perfectly so you know where to stop. So punch again. And then we have a score line right down the center. Let's see if I can feel it with my, I'm sure, no. I thought I had a score line there. <laughs> okay, my moving. There we go. It gets scored over here. Okay, you knew it would. I knew it. Would. So you move over onto the diamond. You punch, and now you're going to score right on the diamond. This is probably the easiest one. The, so most the candy of the, box, the pillow box is pretty easy too. Most of the times you're um, moving your paper, punching it, and then and scoring. Then scoring. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I'm going to punch. And I'm going to score, and that's what I do with this whole thing. But now you do that have I, those guides. That's just right. marvelous. I love that it grabs onto it. I mean, sort of. I can't really move it off mm -hmm. of there, so you know exactly where you need to be. I'm going to make sure that I punched all the way through, and then you score, and then the last time, wherever you've got that diamond, you know you're going to have to score again. Don't have to punch again, but I do have to score. Now I flip it over, not turn it over, flip it. So I'm, I'm matching the opposite end, and then I start on that start line, and I start punching again, and I move down the length. I've already done that, and I've got it on this piece. Now so, that looks interesting. <laughs> so this is the piece that is done. It's been scored on both ends. Now I'm going to, I need that bunch Oh, back. you need it back? Okay. I'm going to turn it around. Oh, that's right. I'm going to take these diamonds away. <laughs> and what's great about, here, here are these little diamond guides here so that you can match those up and do a little bit of decorative ah. punching at the other end. Kind of rest it in place. Right. So you do that, and you just continue on down and punch. I'm just going to do it on this one end so that you can see. And then don't worry about, I don't think I have to worry about the end. Is it, oh yeah, maybe. <laughs> there, okay. No, that doesn't really show up on the, on the very end there. But there, now it's punched. And I could have done that on the opposite end too, but I'm not going to do it this time. Then you go along with your scoring tool and make sure all those folds are folded nicely. So I'm going to... Just run that along there. And this is, you can see it's creating that shape that we're going for. Like so. And when you put adhesive, you just run it along this end. So that tab is continuous on each of them. Right. That you're going to have a tab, that's where you'll apply your glue. Right. And that's going to create your kind of circle to begin with. Right. Sort of get it started. I need a, I need a bigger piece to get it started. <laughs> oh, I can't get my glue started. You have a glue stick? I always have work? a glue stick. <laughs> <laughs> this is a great, if I can, uh, wait a, there we go. I got it, I got it, I got it. Okay. Okay. I but the glue stick it. was ready. Yeah. <laughs> this was just sitting back a little far, so I had to get it moving. Okay. And on all of these, all you have to do is just fold it over, and it's naturally right there. Right. There it's done. And that creates your box. And then you can cinch it up with ribbon, and you, all you have to do is tie ribbon or twine around there, and it cinches that little shape ah. up. And if you do it on the end with the notches, it's even cuter. There like you go. So. Oh, so it just self-closes right. just about. Okay, and that's what was done on this. So simply ribbon around the ends, do a little tag if you like, and that's easy to do. Now, on everything, you've mentioned how you got the choice of links. And here is what this one would look like as a longer length. Mm -hmm. Same thing with the ribbons. Um, and it's it's a nice size. I mean, that's a little, it's about an inch and a quarter. 
Um, I, think, I think it's almost it's almost two inches. I think it's one do you and three quarters. So? Oh, okay, yeah. well, good. So it's it's a nice size inside. Now, this would be a more plain one. Mm -hmm. You can certainly doll these puppies up, and you can see what we've done is this. First of all, is with the Happy Days paper, and that which is appropriate for this right. kind of thing. And then look at all of the fabric tape. Well, we showed you the black one on the first piece. But we have all of these other colors but too. But there you go. So you've got lots of options. Lots and of ideas, a fun way to, to put those on there very simply. I would put it on the flat pattern. If I punched both ends, I would put on the flat pattern before I did that. And then I would just remove the adhesive and start running it right from the edge down to wherever I want it and then just cut an angle on there. And then I would just lay them right next to each other, run them down like that. And the nice thing about that is stop really them at different lengths. A little like goes that. a long way, doesn't yeah, it? Right. Very festive. And you w didn't stop there. You added more of the crystals. Right. And going. They, they sit on there. They go right around those corners. So that's they, nice. They bend with the box. Actually, that's nice to know. And then dazzles, of course, complete of the course, picture. Of course, dazzles. Yes, Black beautifully jewel dazzles done. dazzles and a happy birthday treat. Now, I noticed that you had all of these uh, diamonds as you were punching Look things. Look at all those little diamonds. What are you going to do with them? Well, here's an idea. <laughs> How about use them on a card? Create them, make them go into a larger diamond. Use the pieces, uh, just as been done here. And then here are the pearl allure. Right. Oh, let's see, eternal. The eternal pearl doubt. Um, Right, pearls, right, yeah, right, whatever. Right, <laughs> and another one right there. So, <laughs> but I love the, the swirls. That's what they are. Eternal yeah. pearl swirls, and so um, Amy put this together in this diamond pattern with a little bit of a tag over here. So you don't have to throw anything away because I know that hurts your heart to do that. This is so. on our new Robin's Red paper pack ah, too. Just right, a, it's a beautiful set of colors. Now we have a last one. This is a gift box. Now this will make twenty different. Different sizes. 22 even. 22, okay. Um, uh, and so gift box, let me show you some ideas. Here is one and look at this beauty. This, as you can see, the size of it, this is out of the new Fancy Feathers paper. So you can use paper, you can use cardstock. Right. And this is the a new Feather Dazzles. Now these were placed on acetate and just trimmed out just right along the edge. And then just tied on top with the right. Feathers ribbon set. Right, that's just a How beautiful fun. idea. Yeah. Very, very fun. More of the rhinestones coming up there. So that's a, a, almost half of the package right. so beautifully and done. These are really quick to make too. It does not take very long. You can make a quick little gift box. Okay, show me. So here's the punch board and here's our handy little scoring tool up on the left. So I'm going to set that down and I'm going to start by looking at this chart here. It's also duplicated on the instructions but this chart tells you for whatever size box you want to achieve, which is here on the left, it tells you what size of paper to cut. And then it tells you your start line will be S and your diagonal line will be S. It's also in centimeters over here if you need that version. So what I have is a six inch by six inch piece of cardstock because I want to do that very first box, a uh, one and three quarter uh, square box in all sizes. So six by six, start line S, diagonal line S. Okay, I'm going to back out. Here's our punch board. I start it on this diagonal line. That's a little different than the other punch boards. I'm going to, going to find, these are all of our start lines down here on the left, and I'm going to line this up with S because it said S is my start line for this size. So the first thing I do is punch it. Then I take my scoring tool, and I'm going to do three lines most every time I do this a line on this this way, so a vertical line, a horizontal line, and if this was paper you wouldn't want to push too hard because it can go through, but you do want to be not too quick when you're doing these score lines because there are a lot of score lines on here and if you do it too quick it'll sort of vary and move around. So we're also going to score along S. This is the diagonal line. It said S for the start line and S for the diagonal. These are the diagonal choices. So I'm going to choose S and I'm going to score just down to, and that's going to stop me right there, right? So you've got this score line, 
this score line and that diagonal score. I've already punched, so now I'm going to turn it. And there's the little punch mark that it makes. Turn it and do the next side. So I'm turning it 90 degrees every time. I'm going to line it up with S. Punch. I have a score line here, a score line here. Well, you do have to line it up. There we go. <laughs> And there's that S there for the diagonal score line. And I stop right there. And I do that on all four sides. It look, feels like this is one of those things that just follow the directions. Don't try to overthink it. Just right. follow it, and all will be well in the right. end. <laughs> now, I've chosen, you notice that I've chosen a six by six, and the whole thing fits on this uh, the punch platform. board just mm -hmm. the way it is. If you choose one of the larger sizes, if you're going to use a, like a 12 by 12 piece of paper. Don't forget to punch. Which you can, oh, thank you. Punch, punch, then score. Then if you're going to do that, then you're going to uh, pull out this extension piece out here. Oh. It goes like that. So that helps you to score longer lengths. So oh, that's, that's pretty handy. You don't have to turn it around yeah. to do that. So I've done all four sides. Now I'm going to flip it over and do all four of the other sides. So I'm going to do the same thing, except that all I'm doing here is punching. I don't have to do any more scoring. Oh, OK. So there. I was there. just going to ask you about that. Why would you score again? And that's right. <laughs> you just have to get those punches, because there's going to be two punches on each side okay. to create this box. All right. This is the form that you're going to use. The last thing I'm going to do with the punch board is turn it around. There's this nice little slot. So here's that reverse side of the punch. And each corner is going to be placed in there. Before I describe it, I'm just going to show you. Get it in there. Make sure that it's uh, resting against two edges. Punch. And now look at that. A little, it's a little, a little slot. A little happy face. <laughs> a little happy face. <laughs> and you want to turn it. Don't like flip it over at this point. Turn it and do the same thing on all four. So oh. those little slots are what are going to hold the top of your box together. It also sort of curves the end of that little point too, makes it kind of nice. I have to say, whoever engineered all of these did a marvelous <laughs> job. Oh, yeah. Hats really off nice to you. Job. So there's the little scraps that I don't need. So once that's done, there are some things that you're going to, you're going to be scoring this nicely along, first of all, these long score lines. One, two, Three. We're just creasing that. The score lines are already there, and we're just making sure that they're going to lay nice and flat. We're going to do it there, and we're going to do it on the flaps. Two. So much easier three. after they've been scored. Oh, yeah. <laughs> kind of like butter. There we go. OK, now when this gets put together, the points that are going to be creased and pushed to the center are right here. So you've got this box that's going to be your base. And you start pulling this together like this. Ah. So that's going to bring it those, in, isn't each it? Each of those are going to, I'm just going to sort of push it in and sort of crease it as I go. So all of those points are, are those pushed mountain in, folds. Right. And then you pull it into the center. And then with those nice little slotted tabs, you pull two ends together like so. And then the other two. Now you can tape these the sides together if you like. But so far, I haven't really found a need for that because those slots keep them together. Now, as long as I line them up. <laughs> there we go. Now, this was the lightweight cardstock yeah. that we used for this particular sure, but one. But you can even use paper, so, so there's your little box. And this is the smallest box you can make. And here are the next two sizes. Now, this is out of the ripple paper, both the copper and the mocha. So works really nicely. Would you show us the lid of that? You showed the bottom when it came together. Is this, that so? That's the opening also. Oh, this is the no. Okay. The bottom is just the bottom okay. of the paper. Okay. See, I'm going to pull it apart and show you. This was this is actually the top. So that when okay. somebody gets this gift box, that's how they open it. Right. They open it right. up like that, and then whatever you have is inside. The bottom of the center of that cardstock is the bottom of your box. Perfect. Perfect. OK. So you can see we showed you out of patterned paper. We showed you a tall one. And then here is the next two sizes. You said the blue one that you did was the smallest. Right. And, and you just pick any size that you want. And the part that's going to you're going to vary in the width and in the height of the box. OK, in both. 
again, 22 again, different right. ones. Now look at this stack of beauties. <laughs> so they are all done out of the circle holographic paper. You right. can see the purple and the blue and the green. So you do each one of these. <clears throat> and then I placed, after I put the boxes together, after I closed them, I placed fabric tape oh. around the outside of them. So you can still open the top of the box. Okay, good. Good, good. to know. And then you did one, just this is a regular this ribbon. Is, this just is ribbon happens from to the, Right, the Happy right. Days paper pack. I love that dotted ribbon. It ties it all together. And I kind of zotted them a little bit so that they would stack in place. And then you also have the um, uh, pearls. So right. they're so shown. these are the uh, eternal pearls that are, okay. there's a little piece here, there's one coming this way, some around, and they go around the corners a little bit. And again, you can use one piece of it and cut it apart and right. do whatever you like. Now, here on the front, these little, um, pretty little charms, basically, that you're seeing, they are cut out of design toolkit number five. Ah, so that is part of that design toolkit is that you can trace out these shapes. I traced them out on the holographic paper and then I uh, gilded the edges a little bit with zinc, silver, oh, glitter, okay. and embossing that we powder. did the other day. Right. Okay, so you have gift boxes. You have regular boxes, right? <laughs> gift bag. bags. Sorry. Gift bags. You have pillow boxes, pillow boxes and, and you have the candy, candy boxes. boxes. So whatever you need, boxes, bags are ready for you. Have fun.